All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. 2024, the experts are already telling us that uh, you're not going to make any money. So I got a 22-part series of videos here. We're going to run through a lot of things. I'm going to try and keep these very short, very simple. Um, how can we manage our nutrient dollars better in 2024 to help us farmers find the best opportunity that we can to find profit when the industry says we can't? Um, in this video, is pretty much disclaimers. <laughs> Uh, I will say, first of all, I'm not worried. I am not worried about planting and weather this summer because there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not worried about a new crop that's nine months out from harvest and selling. I can't do anything about it. Them worries go to God. I still sleep good at night. I'm going to focus on asking for his wisdom and guidance to either give me the ideas or bring people into my life that can help give me good direction. So we're gonna break this series of videos down into uh, components, like this is how our year's gonna go. So the first thing we're gonna do this year is a standard, I, I, bear with me, I know you guys come here for craziness, and I don't mean to kind of bring this level of goofy right out of the gate, but step one, heading into this year is a standard soil test. What? I know. Right out of the gate, we're El Mr. Weirdo. Um, a standard soil test. Yes, standard soil test. But we are not using this standard soil test to create bragging rights. I could give two turduckens less if you had a K level of 500, I'd say that's really cool. Here's your trophy. <clears throat> what we need to be doing is using this soil test a lot more often than we've been doing and stop looking at numbers like, well, my P1, my Bray, you know, that's at nine. Like I better buy a lot of phosphorus and get that up there. Um, and my K, you know, is that 50 or whatever? And so I got to buy a million pounds of potassium to, so I can get that up to 500. I need to be able to tell the guys at the coffee shop. Using the soil test that way to get big numbers on your P and K, that is how retailers make money, not you and I. You and I need to find an agronomist that understands balances, balancing a soil test and fixing deficiencies. That soil test is the first thing we're doing this year to tell us where to allocate our bulk nutrient dollars. So I have two fields. We soil tested them last fall. That field was 50p and 300k or something like that. This field was roughly a nine on a P and a 50 on a K. It gave us potassium deficiency issues. So why on earth, with a 50 and a 300 reading, I could literally farm the rest of my life, my nephews could farm most of their life without ever putting one nickel of P and K of MAP and potassium chloride on that field in bulk you know, and never have a deficiency. Why, why would I spend one nickel on a year when I'm being told that we aren't going to make any money? Why would I spend one nickel of money on that field? Why would I not either just save that money or let's reallocate some of that money to this field that's really hard? So what we did last fall, the pH was low, potassium was really low. Out of northern Minnesota, we get a lime and an ash product together. <clears throat> the, the people in the know, they do their math and say, hey, three, three ton per acre, it was quite a bit lower than that. It was like two ton per acre. Um, would have brought, in theory, should have brought the pH up to that 6.4 area. So we put on three ton to the acre. So we know for sure 
we're going to get that 6'4", 6'6", uh, pH. It also brought 120 theoretical pounds of potassium to the field per acre. Now, when we strip till, that field is so far behind, that 120 pounds isn't moving your, your soil test a lot. But hopefully it gives us something to feed the crop. On that field, we are also going to put some in our strip till to put a low rate of potassium in the root zone where the plant can readily, very easily get to it. That is our soil test. We're also looking at uh, the imbalances of the soil test. If your cal and your mag and these other things are way out of extremes, we need to find a person that can help us understand these things because uh, boron is the sober cab driver to the phosphorus party. If you are short of boron, that means you might see phosphorus deficiencies. Mag has something to do with, with nitrogen and potassium. If, if them micros, molybdenum, has something to do with it. Calcium has an effect on it. Copper, iron, zinc has an effect on it. If them micros are way out of whack, um, then we could see macro deficiencies and we could be spending a lot of money on the wrong repair work to fix a problem. So we need to be doing these soil tests. I think that sums that up pretty good, don't you? I think we'll just end right here. The next episode, we will talk about phase two, um, moving from broadcast to strip till or broadcast to banding and the efficiencies. And that's where the real big money starts getting saved. And so this one, guys, ending right here, short, sweet. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.